Hi there YouTube people, thanks for tuning in again to this ongoing build of the Jeff Troy World Models Pulse Jet Powered Tame Cat ARF. Now what I've done so far is I've followed the instructions and I have hinged the ailerons to the wing. Fairly simple process, just dab a CA on the CA hinges, wiggle it, done. So I've done both wing halves. The instructions then said to join the wings together but I'm not going to do that yet because through the wing will have to come some fuel lines and some of the engine mount and I haven't quite worked out exactly how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to leave the wing joining until much later. So I went on, the following step was to glue the tailplane to the fuselage, which I have done. As you can see, that's a very simple job too. The tailplane just glues flat on the back of the fuselage. You can use epoxy, you can use wood glue like PVA or aliphatic resin. Um, I've glued that on. I also took the opportunity to hinge the elevator, same way as with the ailerons. It's just CA hinges, but what I have done is I've used seven hinges. I've added three extra hinges because we don't want this piece fluttering off. If your elevator leaves the aeroplane, your control options become seriously limited and we don't want that. So I've made it so that it's going to be damn hard for this piece to fly off because I know the world model aircraft tend to have a bit of flutter when you get a bit of speed on. <coughs> Next step is going to be put the fins on. We've got some fins here. I've already hinged the rudders on these as well because although we may not use the rudder as a control surface, um, I want the option to do that later just in case. So I've hinged them. They then go into slots we cut in here. That gives us the twin fins and there's also a couple of pieces going underneath basically to stop the bottom of the fuselage scraping when you're doing those takeoffs and those high angle landings. Um, after we've done that I'll be looking at the undercarriage. Now the undercarriage on the normal tame cat just consists of a set of main gear and a nose leg which goes quite a way back from the nose. It actually fits about here remembering we've got a big cowl goes on here. So normally the nose leg goes here. In fact the nose leg mount's already pre-installed because it'd be quite hard to screw that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the nose leg forward and I'm going to make the, the main gear wider. And why am I going to do that? Because one of the few irritations with this particular ARF is that quite often in the, current, in the standard configuration, if you get a little bit of crosswind, they'll tip up and they'll balance just on the nose leg and one main gear. And they'll sit there and the prop will start chewing holes in the ground. So I need to make them more stable on the ground. So I'm going to widen the track of the main gear by bending it out. That'll make the plane lower, of course, but it doesn't matter because we don't have a propeller. It can be quite low to the ground. As long as there's enough height for it to actually rotate for takeoff, we can have it very close to the ground. And that'll make it more stable on the ground because um, we want as much stability as possible during the takeoff run. Um, when I put the nose leg in here, I'll raise it so the nose leg is also shorter, so we won't end up with a, a nose high aircraft. And that hopefully should improve the ground handling no end. So let's have a look at how we do that. Now I'm part way through moving this undercarriage and nose block um, and I can't believe it but actually the, the little piece that, uh, that the nose block runs or the nose leg runs in, the little mount, is glued to a plywood former here inside the plane. I'll just zoom in so we can have a look at that. Okay now normally the, the nose leg sits on this former which is quite away from the front because we've got that big cowl out here remember and this is the, the nose leg block here. Um, it is glued to that um, plywood form you see there, glued, and there are four little wood screws. In fact, I'll show you how big the wood screws are that are supposed to hold that nose leg in place. You can see there, that tiny little wood screw is supposed to hold that undercarriage block. We're especially when you consider that in a trainer of any kind, there are going to be a lot of stresses shall we say on that nose leg because when people come in all wrong and it bounces what happens is the nose leg bends back and I've seen it in other tame cats that are flying in this field um, this nose leg just rips out silly silly design you must bolt that plate in if screws won't hold and gluing well it doesn't matter how good your glue is it's not going to hold and if you look I've actually pulled this one off you can see how little glue was used in the first place so it came off pretty easy so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a new former in up here and I'm going to mount our nose block way further forward to give us a longer wheelbase, better ground handling. I'll make up a new former now just out of some scrap plywood. Now what I've done here is I've made up a new mount for the nose leg block that holds the nose leg and I'm going to put that in just one former ahead of the old, um, the old nose leg mount. That'll give me an extra, what is it, about 70 millimetres or two and a half inches or two and three quarter inches of distance between the nose leg and the main gear which will be very very useful in terms of providing extra stability. Now putting the nose leg in temporarily because I want to line this up so it's nice and straight and I've mixed up some epoxy, well I'm still mixing up some epoxy here which will hold it all in place. 
just a little word about epoxy, in case you don't know. Uh, there are obviously different types of epoxy. There's 5 minute, 10 minute, 30 minute, 24 hour. And you might think, why would you use anything other than 5 or 10 minute epoxy? Well, there's a good reason for that. The faster epoxies tend to cure more in a more brittle state. So they become sort of, they shatter under sudden impacts. This is the nose leg. It's going to be subject to a few sudden impacts, possibly. We don't know. Um, not the way I fly, of course. So I'm using a somewhat slower epoxy to hold this new former in place. And I'm going to smear this all over the former. So I'm using a slower epoxy because that's going to cure and it's going to be a little bit more flexible than the fast epoxies. And I want the flexibility because I don't want it to shatter if we accidentally have a hard landing. So although it takes longer to cure, the result is a stronger bond. And that's important in this particular part of the aircraft. So I'm pouring plenty in there. I shall put some on the bottom of the new former as well. Make sure it glues securely to the airframe. There we go, plenty on there. And a little bit more down the side. You don't want to use too much because epoxy is quite heavy. Although I'm putting it at the end of the model where heavy is useful because, as I said, this could turn out to be a little bit tail heavy, this particular model. There we go, plenty of epoxy everywhere. Now I put this former in, and we need to have it held in place. So I'm using the, these nice little clips that you can buy. They're really handy when you're building, especially you're building ARFs. That will clamp this former in place. Now, I'm going to put the nose leg in, because I want to make sure that everything is perfectly vertical. Nothing worse than having the, the nose leg on a funny angle. I can just hold it up, and I can do that by eye. It's not that critical. So, yeah, that looks beautiful. Oh, absolutely marvellous. <clears throat> That'll do it. And I have another clip here which might just fit down into here. I'm not too sure. No, it's too big. Never mind. That should hold things in place while the epoxy dries. And you'll notice also that I have already put the main gear in temporarily. It just goes underneath like this. Uh, it's just wire gear, the slot's cut in the bottom of the fuselage and I've spread it out so that it's wider to give us that extra tracking stability I was talking about, resistance to tipping over. So I'll leave this glue to dry and we'll come back in a few minutes.